The Rendlesham Forest incident, often referred to as Britain's Roswell, stands as one of the most interesting and well-documented UFO encounters in modern history, which of course means it creeps people out. Taking place over the course of several nights in December of 1980, this event would capture the attention of the world due to it taking place quite literally right near the Royal Air Force or RAF Bentwaters in Woodbridge bases in Suffolk, England. The events that unfolded during those concerning nights have long since become the subject of intense scrutiny, investigation, and ongoing debate amongst UFO enthusiasts, researchers, and skeptics alike. Within a span of three consecutive nights, multiple military personnel stationed at RAF Bentwaters reported witnessing unusual and unexplained phenomena on within the nearby Rendlesham Forest. These eyewitnesses, including highly trained and reliable individuals such as the U.S. Air Force personnel, which are the most reliable because USA baby, described encountering the unidentified flying objects or UFOs that exhibited characteristics and behaviors beyond the realm of conventional aircraft or anything that would be known at the time concerning our tech level. The testimonies of those present during the Rendlesham Forest incident are all consistent recounting sightings of strange lights, unidentified aerial craft maneuvering with precision, and even even alleged physical contact with the objects. These accounts, along with the presence of physical evidence such as impressions in the ground and anomalies in radiation readings, have generated considerable interest and speculation regarding the nature of events that unfolded during those nights in December of 1980. The significance of the Rendlesham Force incident extends beyond its status as just another UFO sighting. The incident garnered attention from both military and public, resulting in official investigations and reports by the Ministry of Defense in the United Kingdom. The incident has also sparked scientific examinations of physical traces left behind and psychological evaluations of witnesses involved. Despite the extensive documentation and investigation, the Rendlesham Forest incident remains shrouded in mystery. Various theories and explanations have been put forth, ranging from extraterrestrial visitation to covert military operations, which considering the sudden increase we have seen at this point in time, might be in line with reality. The incident has also attracted its fair share of skepticism and controversy, with alternative hypotheses challenging the validity of eyewitnesses' accounts and raising questions about the official response. So today, let's explore the Randlesham Forest incident in detail, examining the timeline of events and testimonies of the eyewitnesses, as well as the official investigations conducted and the analyses of findings associated with the incident. So to kick this off, let's dive into the event description. Official investigation reports and controversy and skepticism surrounding this incident, as well as scientific analysis and findings, theories and explanations proposed by researchers, as well as influence and cultural impact of this incident. So this incident would actually unfold over the course of several nights. The series of events began on the night of December 26 when USAF security personnel reported unusual sightings and lights descending into the Rendlesham Forest, which bordered on the RAF Woodbridge base. Responding to these reports, Airman First Class John Burroughs and Staff Sergeant Jim Penniston ventured into the forest to investigate what they were seeing. As they would make their way through the dense woodland, as one does at night, Burroughs and Penniston encountered a glowing metallic object with colored lights. Penniston then brought with him a notepad, would walk towards the craft after likely uh, doing rock, paper, scissors to determine who should walk towards this thing, and upon losing said rock, paper, scissors, he would examine it from a close distance. He described the object as triangular in shape, approximately two to three meters tall and two meters wide, with a smooth black exterior. Penniston reported that the object had strange symbols on its surface resembling hieroglyphics or possibly a binary code, which is interesting because humans would actually communicate with hieroglyphics in Egypt, and it's also kind of a thing that they say the pyramids were created by aliens. I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. But he touched the symbols, experiencing a burst of information in his mind as the craft would then rapidly ascend, emitting a brilliant light and disappeared into the night sky. Would this cause brain cancer later? I wouldn't take those odds. On the following night of December 27th, another group of USAF personnel, including Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, observed further strange lights in the Rendlesham Forest. Halt and his team then ventured into the forest as well to investigate this phenomenon just prior to where the duo had. And during his investigation, Halt's team witnessed a series of inexplicable events. They observed bright lights moving erratically through the trees, with one light reportedly splitting into multiple objects. Some witnesses described seeing beams of light projecting down to the ground as if conducting a search or examination. The lights exhibited unconventional flight patterns and seemed to respond to the observer's movements and gestures. Halt, recognizing the significance of these events, made audio recordings during the incident, which came to be known as the Halt tape. Watch, straight ahead off my flash right there, yeah, so there it is. Hey, I see it too. What is it? 
don't know, sir. So, yeah, can I get some of Yeah, it's a strange, small red light. It looks to be out maybe a quarter to half mile, maybe further out. I'm going to switch off. The light is gone now. It was approximately 120 degrees from the site. Yeah. Is it back again? Yes, sir. Oh, that's the flashlight, sir. Let's move out to the edge of the clearing so we can get a better look at it. See if you can get the star scope on it. The light's still there, and all the barnyard animals have gotten quiet now. Yeah, we're heading about 110 to 120 degrees from the site out through to the clearing now. Still getting a reading on the meter. About two clicks. Meter's jumped three to four clicks, getting stronger. On the tape, Halt can be heard describing the unusual lights and his team's attempts to approach them. The Halt tape remains one of the most critical pieces of evidence associated with the Rendlesham Forest incident. In the subsequent nights, additional sightings and encounters were reported, further adding to the mystique of this incident. Witnesses described unidentified objects hovering above the RAF Woodbridge base, disappearing at incredibly high speeds. However, these later events did not involve as many witnesses as the initial encounters on the December 26th and 27th. So did the owner of these lights just straight up lose one of their own and they were looking for them? It almost seems that way. The incident then gained immediate attention as rumors spread within the military community and then reached the public. And like gonorrhea on shore leave, things tend to spread rather quickly through the military community. The incident was investigated by both the UK Ministry of Defense and the USAF. Despite official investigations, the exact nature and origin of the observed phenomenon remain unsolved, and the incident continues to be a subject of intense speculation and interest within the UFO research community. The event description of the Rendlesham Force incident is interesting though for several reasons, but the main one being is it was seen by multiple people and has multiple eyewitness accounts, physical traces of it are left behind, and the presence of the military personnel who were reporting it is kind of a big deal. So this sets it apart as one of the most compelling UFO encounters that defies conventional explanations. So as it's attracted attention from both the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense and the United States Air Force, this led to the official investigations and reports and these inquiries' entire goal was to examine the circumstances surrounding the events, evaluate witness testimonies, and determine if there were any potential national security implications. You know, I always think of it this way. You know how, like, we find uncontacted tribes sometime and we send, like, a drone over them to be like, oh, hey, look at them. I wonder if they think that that's, like, their national security is being threatened because we have a drone flying over them, when really it would just be no contest if it were a threat. And I really kind of wonder, though, if, like, that's how aliens view us, like, oh, this is a threat to our national security but the reality is it would be over before we even knew it started. So the first thing the Ministry of Defense was trying to do is upon receiving reports of the Rendlesham Force incident, they would launch their investigation to assess the nature and significance of these events. In January of 1981, the Ministry of Defense representative Peter T. Horsley visited RAF Woodbridge to interview witnesses and gather information. The Ministry of Defense investigation concluded that the sightings could be attributed to the misinterpretations of mundane phenomena, such as misidentified aircraft lights, natural phenomenon, or man-made objects. The MOD's official position, as stated in the memo, was that there was no evidence to suggest a threat to national security and that no further action was required. Because I mean, clearly, why would they say, yes, there's a threat here? You just, you can't do that. This then sparked the Halt Memo, or Lieutenant Charles Halt's account, which is one of the most significant documents associated with the Rendlesham Force incident, and in January of 1981, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, the deputy base commander at RAF Bentwaters, composed a memorandum detailing his observations and experiences during the account. The memo addressed to the MOD provided a detailed account of the events on December 27, 1980. Halt described the sightings of unusual lights and the presence of a triangular craft and the bizarre behaviors exhibited by the objects. The memo included references to radiation readings, mysterious indentations in the ground, and first-hand witness testimonies. Halt's memo, although initially classified as confidential, later became public, sparking increased interest in the incident and leading to further scrutiny and analysis. So next, a document known as the Condon Report, not Condom Report, but Condon Report, and scientific examination would come out sparking even more debate. In 1983, the U.S.-based Scientific Coalition of Ufology, or SCU, commissioned an independent scientific analysis of the Rendlesham Forest incident, similar to the Condon Report conducted by the U.S. Air Force regarding the study of UFOs. The SCU's report, known as Rendlesham Forest UAP, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, incident aimed to provide a thorough examination of available evidence and determined if the events had potential for extraterrestrial explanations. Now, it is interesting that they uh, actually had the terminology UAP back in the day, because people think, like, it's kind of anecdotally, but they think now we're trying to change 
change the wording from UFO to UAP to confuse people. But if you look at this, I mean, it's been around for over 40 years. So the report concluded that the Rendlesham Forest incident was genuine and unexplained as an event that warranted further investigation. It highlighted the multiple credible eyewitness testimonies, physical traces, and cooperating evidence as compelling factors. The Condon report, however, did not provide an official assessment or investigation specifically dedicated to the Rendlesham Forest incident. As a result, the SCU report remains a notable scientific analysis conducted independently. While official investigations by the mod and the USAF did not actually confirm the presence of extraterrestrial craft, they acknowledged the occurrence of unusual events and sightings because, again, you cannot just come out right and say that some like this thing exists. I you don't want to do that. If anything, we can draw from information provided by the Men in Black. That's right, the movie. The individual person is smart, but as a group, humans are panicky and unpredictable. So if you tell us something like that, I imagine it might spark a little bit of concern. The investigations and reports raise questions about the incident's potential impact on national security and inspired even more research and public interest in the incident. So this particular event, like any high-profile UFO encounter, has faced its fair share of controversies and skepticism, which is valid because without skepticism we essentially revert back to a belief in voodoo. Various alternative explanations have been put forth by skeptics and critics, challenging the validity of the eyewitness testimonies and questioning the official response of this incident. The controversies and skepticism surrounding the event can be grouped into several key events which run the usual gambit of explanations. It's swamp gas. It's always got to be swamp gas. It doesn't matter if there's not a swamp nearby. Don't ask questions. So the first is the standard when approaching things that are unknown to the the average person. It's got to be a natural phenomenon or a misinterpretation. One of the primary arguments presented by skeptics is the observed events could be attributed to something just completely natural. They suggest that the witnesses may have misjudged common celestial objects, such as stars, planets, or meteors, as unidentified flying objects. Additionally, proponents of this view argue the witnesses' perceptions could have been influenced by factors like stress, fatigue, or psychological impact of being in a dark forest at night, because it doesn't matter if you're with your buddies and you're in the military, the forest is always going to be creepy. So now it's kind of actually story time. So I went over to meet with another YouTuber for Power Tour in McDonough, Georgia called Junkyard Digs at the beginning of June. I left the restaurant around 9 p.m. and then headed back to my house, which is about 45 minutes or so of a drive through essentially back roads and small towns. On a really dark road, I spotted something up in the sky as I looked up. It was a string of lights, about 25 or 30 of them. Now, before you call me ridiculous or whatever, there is an explanation. At the time, I called my wife and told her what I was looking at, and she immediately asked how drunk I was, which I don't drink and drive, so uh, neither should you. I was completely sober. Now, this was interesting because clearly it wasn't a plane. It didn't appear to be moving all that much, and as I watched it, I actually ended up stopping my car, got out on this back road, and just sort of looked at it. Eventually, the lights would get dimmer and dimmer until they just kind of disappeared from view, and I was left to wonder, what in the name of all this holy did I just see? I went home, and and started looking some stuff up and I actually found exactly what it looks like. As it turns out, it was a SpaceX satellite grouping. I had never seen anything like it before in my life, but it makes sense. Now the point is, I have been looking at the sky all of my life like most people and I've never really seen anything like this. My first instinct was to think that it was something more than what it really was until I looked into it further. The point is, humans misidentifying things all the time is kind of like just the usual thing, so it's important to approach any unknown with a hint of skepticism. Some skeptics would argue that the Rendlesham Forest incident may have been actually a deliberate hoax or a case of misinterpretation fueled by sensationalism. They propose that the witnesses may have embellished their accounts or even fabricated them for personal gain, attention, or to perpetuate the UFO mythology. Now, critics then would argue that the lack of concrete physical evidence and the reliance on eyewitness testimonies make incidents susceptible to exaggeration or manipulation. But I would also counter this by saying if you are high up in the military, you're probably not going to risk your position position up there for your own personal like what did they really gain from this if anything it's a huge risk for not a lot of gain so another line of skepticism also suggests that the Rendlesham Forest incident could be attributed to military activities or experiments that were either classified or intentionally undisclosed according to this viewpoint the unusual sightings and behaviors witnessed by the military personnel may have been part of a classified project such as experimental aircraft, weapons testing, or psychological warfare exercises. Skeptics argue that the military's involvement and subsequent investigations were intended to deflect attention from these activities. Sort of like, um, I don't know, shaking your keys over here so that you can eat ice cream over here and 
the youngly won't notice. But critics of the Rendlesham Force incident point to the alleged discrepancies and inconsistencies with witness testimonies. They argue that variations in the description of the observed objects, the sequence of events, and the lack of immediate reporting raise doubts about the credibility and reliability of witnesses. Skeptics contend that the passage of time and the influence of subsequent media coverage may have distorted or shaped memories of the witnesses, leading to inconsistencies within their accounts. Now, this is something to note about first-hand accounts, and it's actually well-known, like, if somebody, say, steals something from a store, right, or they allegedly stole something from a store, you could have an eyewitness account that they stole, but it can be influenced by other factors, making them misremember. In fact, our memory is very malleable, we just don't think it is. So some skeptics also raise questions about the official response to the incident, suggesting it was inadequate or intentionally misleading. They argue the Ma's dismissal of the event as misinterpretations or natural phenomena without further investigation indicates a lack of transparency or desire to conceal potential national security concerns. And would there ever be a government organization that lacks transparency? This is just not possible. So the skeptics also criticize the USAF's initial reluctance to acknowledge the incidents and suggest that the subsequent investigations were limited in scope and failed to provide definitive answers. It's also important to note that while skepticism and alternative explanations exist, they do not discount the testimonies of multiple witnesses or the presence of physical traces associated with the incident. The controversies and skepticism surrounding the incident have fueled ongoing debates and investigations, kind of highlighting the complexities and challenges associated with studying unidentified aerial phenomenon and also not looking absolutely insane. One aspect that distinguishes the Rendlesham Forest incident is actually the presence of said physical evidence. Multiple witnesses reported indentations in the ground where the alleged UFOs were observed. Some of these indentations showed strange characteristics such as raised edges, anomalous soil composition, Scientific analysis of these indentations reveal anomalies in the soil's magnetic properties and radiation levels, providing kind of some really interesting inconclusive evidence, but evidence nonetheless. However, when taking a small sample size and finding radiation levels where there were no other hints the soil has been otherwise irradiated does show that something was there. The question is, what was there? And also, if the magnetism of the soil has been altered in some way, this can be done with human activity, but it just shows that something was there. But what it was kind of remains to be seen. But to add, during this incident, witnesses, including Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, reported anomalous radiation readings in the area where the UF was sighted, and not just with the soil. So scientific analysis of the soil samples taken from the force indicated elevated levels, as we pretty much have stated, compared to background levels. However, the significance and origin of this radiation remains a subject of debate and interpretation. So along with the physical evidence, psychological evaluations of the witnesses involved in the Rendlesham incident have been conducted. These evaluations aim to assess the mental state and credibility of these witnesses. The findings indicated that the witnesses displayed no signs of psychological instability or suggestibility that could explain their shared experiences. Psychological evaluations supported the notion that the witnesses genuinely believed they had encountered something extraordinary. And again, that's all well and good, but it should still be noted that just like with me witnessing a SpaceX satellite array, I too thought I was seeing something absolutely crazy, but it would turn out to be very much so man-made. Researchers would then go on to check the flight radar and military records from that time of the incident to determine that there were no conventional explanations for the observed phenomenon. However, it, again, there were there's like no known aircraft or military operations that could be kind of attributed to the sightings or the behaviors of what these men saw. This analysis further strengthened the argument of the events that they were beyond the scope of conventional explanations. The consistent testimonies of multiple witnesses, including military personnel and it must be known that their training and experience in aircraft identification was actually quite stout, so it adds weight and credibility to the story being reported. The witnesses provided detailed and consistent accounts of the sightings, the craft's physical characteristics, and the unusual behaviors exhibited by the objects. The collective testimony of these witnesses, who held responsible positions within the military, would throw their weight into it as to if it's actually real or not, trending more towards, well, holy hell, this might actually be a real kind of a category. So now one of the most important things to note is that while scientific analysis and findings have provided highly interesting insights, they have not conclusively determined the origin and the nature of the events witnessed during this alleged interaction. And that's because, again, when you're just going off eyewitness accounts, you cannot immediately say what they saw is what they saw. So the scientific investigations have highlighted the strange nature of the incident and its departure from conventional explanations. However, the lack of definitive evidence and the complexities involved in studying unidentified aerial phenomena leave room for the ongoing speculation and debate, at least until we actually confirm 
to everyone in the world that there's aliens. And I'm hoping uh, they're like tally aliens from Mass Effect. So this encounter has sparked numerous theories and explanations from researchers, investigators, and enthusiasts attempting to make sense of what these men actually saw. So while the actual nature of the incident remains a subject of debate, and probably will be for, you know, our lifetime, several hypotheses have emerged over the years in an attempt to either confirm or denigrate the validity behind this incident. So let's start with the first and clearly the most pushed idea concerning this contact. It was just straight up aliens. Proponents of this theory argue that the craft's unconventional appearance, flight patterns, and reported interactions with witnesses suggested an advanced technology beyond our current understanding. Although there's no telling if it's within our grasp now, considering we have really already created craft possibly capable of breaking the sound barrier without a sonic boom. It could be ours, it could not be ours. There's really no way to tell. But they propose that these objects could be manned or unmanned extraterrestrial vehicles conducting surveillance or scientific exploration on Earth. The next is something that should always be considered when dealing with something unknown to you. Man is more intelligent than you might think. We are likely further along the technological scale than most people would assume. This alternative theory suggests that the Rundlesham Forest incident involved classified military technology or experimental aircraft. Because always remember this statement. A week before the Wright brothers flew in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, a bunch of scientists were quoted as saying it could take hundreds of scientists a million years of consistent work before we ever actually learn how to fly and a week later uh, two brothers built something in the garage and we learned how to fly and even now we have hypersonic missiles that did not exist just a decade ago and now it basically blows past our radar and we can't even track these things so uh we're getting really good at taking each other out but according to this view the witnessed objects may have just been advanced prototypes of stealth aircraft undergoing secret tests supporters of this theory argue that the military's involvement in subsequent investigations and really lack of disclosure and transparency could be attributed to the desire to keep the project classified and away from you know, public scrutiny. Which, does the military ever actually tell us anything? The answer is no. Some researchers have proposed these psychological and perceptual factors played a key role in sort of like the witnessed events. They suggest the witness's mental state, such as heightened stress levels, fatigue, and suggestibility, may have influenced their perceptions, leading to misinterpretations of ordinary phenomena. Additionally, psychological factors like mass hysteria or the power of suggestion within a group dynamic could have contributed to these shared experiences. So that's enough of the standard explanations. There are other stranger explanations that are way more fun that go just beyond like an alien encounter, if you can believe it. One crackhead theory suggests that the Rendlesham Force incident involved interdimensional or a time slip phenomena. Proponents of this idea propose that witnessed objects could be from like a parallel dimension or alternate timeline briefly intersecting with our reality. Hmm. Okay, so they argue that the reported strange lights, distorted perceptions of time, and otherworldly experiences align with accounts of similar phenomena reported elsewhere. Out of all the explanations, I would have to say this one is probably the least likely. But again, that's because I, I mean, I just don't know about you guys, but it sounds way too Half-Life to me. So another theory speculates that the incident was actually part of a psychological warfare experiment conducted by the military itself. According to this hypothesis, the witnessed objects and their behavior could have been a deliberate attempt to test a psychological response responses of military personnel or to assess the effectiveness of unconventional methods of psychological manipulation. Skeptics argue that the subsequent investigations and official report were intended to conceal the true nature of this experiment. Given the complexity and multifaceted nature of the Rendlesham Forest incident, some research propose actually a combination of the explanations, which is usually more likely. They suggest that multiple factors, such as misinterpretation of the natural phenomenon, the presence of classified military technology, and psychological influences could have contributed to the witness events, so to speak. This viewpoint acknowledges that no single explanation may fully account for all aspects of the incident. It is important to note that none of these theories have been, like, definitively proven, and the true explanation behind the incident remains elusive. Theories and explanations continue to evolve as new evidence, insights, and perspectives emerge. And if we actually run across aliens, this may bring into focus the actual explanation for those men and what they experienced. This encounter would leave a lasting cultural impact and continues to actually hold captive the imaginations of of UFO enthusiasts, researchers, and the general public. The incident's significance within the realm of UFO phenomenon and its enduring fascination can be attributed to several factors. First, the involvement of such important military personnel, including high-ranking officers, adds credibility and validity to the existence of the actual encounter. The fact that the witnesses held responsible positions within the military, which, you know, 
It's brought into question if you're running around talking about aliens, and the fact that they were all well-trained observers lends weight to their testimonies. The incident stands out as one of the most well-documented UFO encounters involving military personnel and contributing to the cultural significance. And to add to this credibility, the existence of the official documentation and investigation conducted by both the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense and the United States Air Force enhances the incident's allure. The declassified documents, such as the HALT memo, provides a glimpse into the government's response to the incident and fuels speculation speculation about potential cover-ups and undisclosed information, but the fact that the incident caught the attention of the government agencies amplifies its cultural impact. One of the main aspects that can't be ignored is the literal presence of physical evidence, which again, the indentations in the ground reported as a point of validity to the credibility scorecard. Did you like that? I just made up that statement. Physical traces associated with the UFO encounters are actually pretty rare, if you didn't know, and the existence of such evidence in this case has fascinated pretty much everybody associated with it. And these physical aspects are likely going to contribute to ongoing examination and debate for many years to come. The consistent and detailed testimonies of multiple witnesses are central, again, to the enduring questions surrounding this event. The witnesses' accounts of the strange lights, triangular craft, and unusual behaviors provide a rich narrative that continues to captivate those interested in UFO phenomena. The collective testimony of military personnel who were trained to observe and identify the aircraft makes it a little difficult to say, well, I mean, it was just some random who didn't know what they were looking at and they were drinking PBR all night. I sort of feel like these guys may have known what they were witnessing. So because of the people witnessing the event and the clues left behind, the Rolston Force, it's basically entrenched in every type of extraterrestrial investigation and has been featured in books, documentaries, television shows, and movies. And why I say television like that, I don't know, but it's further amplifying its impact, reaching a wider audience. The incident's notoriety has made it a reference point for discussion on UFOs, government secrecy, and the mysteries of the universe, ensuring it's gonna always be talked about. Like literally this video, for instance, I would not have known about this had I not looked up alien encounters. And here you are, listening to me talk about this right now. Or maybe you've already clicked off, you'll never even hear that I said this. But perhaps the staying power that this encounter seems to hold is because of the lack of a definitive explanation. Despite scientific analyses, investigations, and numerous theories, the true nature and origin of the witnessed events remains elusive. This unsolved mystery fuels ongoing research, speculation, and debate today, ensuring that the incident remains a topic of interest and fascination for years to come, considering we are actually 43 years out from this happening. Now, this isn't the first encounter that has sparked debate. There are several events that make it even more interesting in conjunction if you think about it because it's just something that seems to continue to happen. At what point do we acknowledge that there may be something to this? In fact, probably government organizations have already acknowledged that there's something to this, but as a general public, we're just like, oh, everything is fine. Don't worry about it. So let's cover a few of these events real quick as they'll give us an understanding or at least give us like a reference point as to why the Rendlesham Force incident is important. So like the Roswell incident, it's one of the most famous UFO cases in history. It involved a crash or an alleged crash of an unidentified object near Roswell, New Mexico. And like the Rendlesham Forest incident, the Roswell incident attracted significant attention due to its military connection and the presence of physical evidence. However, the Roswell incident has been shrouded in controversy and conspiracy theories, which claims the government cover-up and the recovery of extraterrestrial bodies. In contrast, the Rendlesham Forest incident has seen more official documentation and investigations, which contributes to its credibility. The Phoenix Lights is another notable UFO sighting that occurred in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. It involved a series of lights in the sky witnessed by thousands of people, and unlike the Rendlesham Forest incident, the Phoenix Lights were witnessed by a large civilian population, resulting in extensive media coverage and public interest. This incident lacked physical evidence and official investigations, making it more challenging to substantiate any claims, but in contrast, the Rendlesham Forest incident benefited from the involvement of military witnesses and official inquiries, providing a stronger foundation for research and analyses. And the case of Betty and Barney Hill is one of the most famous alleged alien abduction encounters counters, which actually I have covered this on my channel before if you want to go watch that. It's called the Zeta Reticuli Incident. But the Hills claim to have been taken aboard a UFO and subjected to medical examinations, and unlike the Rendlesham Force Incident, the Hill abduction involved personal experiences and memories rather than physical evidence. While their story gained significant attention and sparked discussions about alien abductions, the lack of corroborating evidence makes it more difficult to kind of objectively analyze and study, because again, memories can be screwed with. But in contrast, the Rendlesham Force Incident offers a mix of witness testimonies, physical evidence, and official investigations, providing a broader scope for analysis. So if you would like me to cover the Roswell and Phoenix lights at a later time, let me know down in the comments, and if there's enough interest, I will go over that. But each of these UFO encounters possess its own unique aspects, but the Rendlesham incident combination of military, investigations, evidence, and ongoing interests 
really does set it apart. Because of this, it's likely always going to stand as one of the most compelling and well-documented UFO encounters in history until we actually see a UFO for real. Uh, the event, which took place over the course of several nights in December 1980, involved pretty much everything that you would want to kind of prove that it might exist. Although, again, it could have just been totally a mess up and a misidentification, but we're probably just going to have to go off speculation regarding its true nature and origin. So, to conclude, the Rendlesham Forest incident remains an enigmatic event that challenges our understanding of the unknown. It serves as a reminder of the mysteries that exist beyond our comprehension and the enduring human fascination with the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The incident will undoubtedly continue to inspire research, investigation, and speculation, ensuring its place in the annals of UFO history for years to come. But anyhow, I want to thank you guys for watching. Well, what do you think it was? Alien or man-made? Personally, I mean, really, if you objectively look at it, the universe is a pretty big place, and seeing that it is, to me, I truly wonder if we really are the only thing in here. The universe, that is, like, it's a big place. But if you enjoyed, leaving a like would be awesome as it gets the video into the algorithm, and subscribing is a great way to stay up to date on when I post. Uh, and it also lets me know that you are, in fact, enjoying this content. So, that's gonna do it for me. I hope everyone enjoyed, and I'll see y'all in the next one.